Hello you and welcome back to my channel or if this is your first time here and you don't know who I am allow me to introduce myself real quick. My name is Matthew Anubito Matamas, we're in Sydney, London, channels all about channel several and tutorials and today I'm very excited to be talking about an exciting new product. Everything's always exciting on this channel, I don't know if you've noticed. This is the LR Timelapse Pro Timer 2.5. Well, I mean, I guess this, this is the box um, and this is the actual remote, which is a very small little item. The LR Timelapse Pro Timer Remote was first developed as an open source DIY or do-it-yourself project by legendary time-lapse software developer Gunther Wegner. I remember emailing Gunther about this project asking if I could somehow buy the completed product uh, because I didn't have the means to make it myself. Sadly, the reply was negative. However, now fast forward a couple years and this is it. This is what you can buy now on Amazon. By the way, if DIY is your thing, you can still go to Gunther's website and download everything you need and buy all the parts and build this thing for yourself for free. Obviously, you have to pay for the parts and all that, but the plans and everything are open source, and I think that's really cool uh, if you want to build this thing yourself. So before I start talking about this remote, let's talk about other remotes. There are literally hundreds of remotes available on Amazon, eBay, and any other website. Any camera store sells a bunch. They range from like 10, 15 to $150, and none of them are actually made for time-lapse. The biggest of a few issues with these remotes is that they send two signals to your camera. So the first signal is an autofocus signal and the second signal is the actual trigger signal. The issue is with the first signal. It sends an autofocus signal to your camera. Your camera's like, oh, I'm about to take a photo. I have to get into photo mode and it slows the camera down. So it stops you actually from using any of the functions on the camera for a small period before it takes the photo. It stops you from reviewing your image. It slows down your live view. It slows down your entire operation. And that's not what you want, even if your lens is on manual focus and even if your back button focus is activated. So you're not focusing your image with your trigger button on the front on your index finger. Uh, you're actually focusing with your thumb on the back. That's back button focus. Maybe that's for another time to talk about. Even if you have all that activated, the camera is still slowed down because it is getting that first signal from the remote. And this whole thing actually increases your dark time, which is the opposite of what you want. Now your dark time is your interval time minus your exposure. Here's a little illustration that I got from Gunther's website. I hope he's okay with me using it here, but it illustrates my point very clearly. As you can see, this autofocusing signal kind of slows things down and is not great for shooting time lapses. Now here's where the LR Time Lapse Pro Timer 2.5 comes in. It doesn't send an autofocus signal at all. So you can review your image or adjust your settings or look at your histogram or whatever. So it is made specifically with that in mind. Not only that, but it's got a bunch of other great functions. Again, this remote is designed specifically for time lapse photographers. So yes, the price is a bit higher, but it is a niche product made for a very small market. So it makes sense. If you're a time lapse photographer or an astrophotographer, this thing is just, it's gold. It's really cool. Let me talk quickly about what other key features this Pro Timer remote has. Firstly, it's got a universal double 2.5 millimeter TRS jack. So this means that you just got to find the right cable for your camera and you can use this on it. Again, it's got two ports, so you can also actually trigger two cameras at the same time. Secondly, most time-lapse remotes only allow you to set your interval time in one second interval. So it, the lowest is, what? well, zero, I guess when you turn it off. The lowest is one second, then it's two seconds, then it's three. This allows you to change your interval in 0.1 steps of a second. So uh, you can go with an interval of like 1.2 seconds or 1.3 or 1.4 or, or 1.5 or 1.6. Or if you want, you can go with a 1.7 or a 1.8 or a 1.9 um, or a two second interval. Thirdly, it's very easy to operate with one large single knob on the side. It's quite smart how it works with the firmware inside. So it's a short click or a long click and that's how you go through the menus. So you can operate this remote when you've got gloves on, for example, when you're out shooting in the cold. You can store your own shooting presets in the remote's memory, which is very, very useful. If you have a certain scenario that you come back to often, you can just have that as a preset and then load it really quickly to go back to that setting when you are in your uh, scenario that you often shoot. <laughs> Does that make sense? You can store your own presets in the remote. It has a dedicated bulb mode for when you're shooting photos with an exposure time longer than 30 seconds. Most cameras max out at 30 seconds in manual mode, then you gotta switch to bulb mode. This uh, has it built in so you can just 
put your camera on bulb, set in your time, and then it'll trigger the exposure for as long as you want. This is very useful for astrophotography when you, for example, wanna have a photo with a big star trail. So you can set that in with your exposure time for you know minutes or hours or whatever you want. This is a great one. You can completely turn off the screen so there's no light pollution at all. You'd be surprised when you're in a very dark place how much light comes off a very small LED. Even the little uh, red light on the back of your camera can light up an entire scene even though it's on the back of your camera. So you have the option to completely turn off this thing and what I think is really cool, you can actually use the screen as a little flashlight to light up your scene if that's what you want. Here's an example photo from Gunther's website where they used that to light a scene with the Milky Way behind the group, which I think is really cool. It's also cool how you, you can increase or decrease the intensity of that mini flashlight using this knob. Just, you know, very smart design. You can see how much thought's gone into this and how it's actually specifically made for time-lapse and astrophotographers. It has multiple mounting points, so it's got two of these slidey hot shoe or cold shoe mounts. You can mount it in all these different directions. It's got this eyelet here at the back for a strap, and then it's got a little eyelet here on the side. So plenty of mounting options if that is something that you're after. I've already talked about it, but these two ports obviously mean that you can shoot with two cameras at the same time, or you can combine it with a motion control system like the Dynamic Perception or the Kessler Crane second shooter, so that one port triggers your camera and the other port triggers your motion control so that it knows when to move. If you don't know motion control, pretty much it's putting your camera on like a slider or a, a pan and tilt head. And then instead of that device controlling when it moves, this thing tells the device when to move, which is important if you don't wanna have any blur in your photos because you wanna shoot, then move your you know, shooting setup, then shoot again, then move it, then shoot again. And you can do that using these two ports. So that's again, really well thought out and a cool function. It has a built-in lithium ion battery that works down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. I believe that's minus four degrees Fahrenheit. And according to the website, it might work in even colder temperatures. So that's pretty cool. Now, I don't know how many people are gonna shoot in minus 20, uh, but it's good to know that it works. The coldest I've ever shot at was minus 40 in uh, Ladakh in India in the Himalayas when I was looking for snow leopards. That's a story for another day. And then finally, it's got a micro USB port on the side to charge it. You can also use it while it's charging, which is again, really useful if your battery is low, you don't have to wait till it's charged to then go use it. Just plug in a battery bank and you're good to go. Now, as we say in Dutch, it's not always rose scents and moonshine. I know that doesn't make sense. Rose goed en pretty much. Um, let's talk about some of the things that I don't love as much about this remote. Firstly, it is not cheap. That being said, here's immediately my counter argument. I mentioned this earlier. This is an incredibly niche product made for a select few people that need these functionalities. So it's made in small batches and of course it's not gonna be cheap. If you think this is expensive, then it's probably not for you. If this is what you need, then it's actually cheap, if you get what I mean. Secondly, it feels slightly fragile. I believe this is a 3D printed case. It's, it, I feel like it could be a bit sturdier. I feel like if I hit this button in the wrong way, I might break it um, or it might come off, I don't know. But yeah, just be careful with your gear, I guess, is, is the solution to that. I'm not sure how well it would deal in very humid or wet conditions. I feel like water could seep in. It's definitely not weather sealed. Again, you take your precautions when you're out shooting with your gear. And then lastly, again, usually, I've said this in another video, usually my negatives on a list are pretty short and I believe that's because I only like to talk about gear that I love and use often. The screen's really small, the pixels are small. I don't have the best eyesight. I know I should have glasses or lenses or whatever. It is a very nice OLED screen, but it is quite small. Sometimes I have to squint to read what's on there. So yeah, that's not ideal, but it's not unforgivable. So to conclude this video, the LR Timelapse Pro Timer 2.5 is in my opinion, the very best remote you can get when you're shooting time-lapse or astrophotography. Yes, it is expensive, but if you are the type of person that needs these functionalities for your extremely high-end time-lapse photography, then you won't mind the price because it is exactly what you need. So yeah, that's that pretty much. The purchase link, which is an affiliate link, you help me out by even just clicking on it, is down below. You can also check out my blog post that I wrote about this. It's pretty much this video in written form if you prefer to read, but by the time you're here now, you've seen the whole video, so what's the point? Check out my eBooks about time-lapse photography and astrophotography. 
subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Oh, and now for that end screen. I am, I am not feeling great. I've got a cold, I'm sore. I've got like, my nose is all congested. I'm feeling bad, but I'm happy that you're still here. <laughs> uh, anyways, click some of these things, will you? Cheers.